It's that time of year again, a time when millions of men take on the challenge known as No Nut November. But here's the real question. Is abstaining from ejaculation for an entire month actually beneficial for your health? I'm Dr. Samra Taralik, a board-certified urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today we're going to take a closer look at the science behind semen retention, what really happens inside your body when you abstain, how long those effects last, and whether this popular trend is truly as transformative as some claim it to be. At its core, semen retention is the deliberate act of refraining from all forms of ejaculation. This includes sex, masturbation, any form of sexual release. And once November rolls around each year, many participate in this self-imposed 30-day challenge that originally took off from a Reddit post back in 2011 and has since become somewhat of a global phenomenon. Now, let me be perfectly clear. My goal today isn't to encourage or discourage anyone from participating. If you're engaging in this challenge out of curiosity or for psychological, spiritual, or even self-discipline reasons, and those motivations are yielding positive experiences, then you're absolutely entitled to continue. However, the purpose of this discussion is to clear up the biological misconceptions surrounding this practice, many of which are simply not grounded in science. Claims like semen retention drastically boosts testosterone, improves fertility, or creates explosive increases in ejaculate volume are widely circulated. But what does actual research have to say? Let's begin with testosterone, arguably the most discussed hormone in the context of semen retention. So far, the scientific literature on this is extremely limited. We have only two small-scale studies worth noting, one including just 10 men and another slightly larger with 29 participants. The first study observed a modest increase in testosterone levels after three weeks of abstinence. But here's the crucial caveat. These were young, healthy men who knew they'd be watching erotic content and masturbating at the end of the trial period. That anticipation of sexual reward isn't just a mental phenomenon. It directly stimulates the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis in the brain. In simple terms, their bodies were preparing themselves for sexual activity. Why is this important? Because the anticipation of a reward, especially a sexual one, leads to neuroendocrine changes. That means any short-term testosterone boost seen here likely had less to do with semen retention and more to do with the brain gearing up for impending sexual stimulation. The second study found a temporary spike in testosterone after about seven days of abstinence, but that spike didn't last. In fact, hormone levels quickly returned to baseline. So even if testosterone does increase slightly in the first few days, the effect is brief, relatively minor, and appears to be more about your brain's expectations than any physical benefit of retention itself. Next, let's talk about fertility, because this one often surprises people. The myth is that the longer you abstain, the more fertile or potent your sperm becomes. In reality, the opposite tends to be true. After about five to seven days of abstinence, multiple peer-reviewed studies have shown measurable declines in sperm quality. More specifically, you've got increased DNA fragmentation, abnormal sperm morphology, meaning shape, and reduced motility, which refers to how well sperm can swim. Sperm is constantly being produced in the testes, and like any biological material, it doesn't improve with age. The longer it's stored without being released, the higher the risk of oxidative stress, a buildup of damaging free radicals that can impair sperm DNA and reduce its function. So if your goal is fertility, prolonged abstinence is not in your best interest. In fact, the American Society for Reproductive Medicine recommends ejaculatory frequency of every other day during a woman's fertile window to optimize both sperm quality and conception chances. Now, let's address the one area where abstinence does have a measurable effect, semen volume. Yes, semen volume can increase with abstinence, and this has been shown across multiple systematic reviews. That means researchers compiled data from dozens of independent studies and analyzed it for trends. One review examined 17 studies with abstinence durations ranging up to 14 days and another review looked at 30 studies. The consensus was clear. 
increased abstinence leads to greater seminal volume, especially in the first few days. However, what often gets overlooked is the rate of volume increase. Most of the gain happens within the first four days of abstinence, and it's only about a 12% increase in volume per day. After that, the rate of increase slows dramatically. From a physiologic standpoint, this makes complete sense. Your body does not allow unneeded fluids, especially biologically active ones, to accumulate without limit. In fact, once your reproductive system senses there's excess or unused seminal fluid, it begins reabsorbing components of it, including proteins, enzymes, and even sperm, back into the body for recycling. This is a natural homeostatic process. Additionally, after prolonged retention, your chance of experiencing involuntary ejaculation, commonly known as a nocturnal emission or wet dream, increases significantly. This is your body's built-in reset mechanism, controlled autonomously by the brain. It's not a sign of weakness or mental failure. It's simply biology doing its job. Many participants in this challenge wrongly internalize guilt when this happens, often triggered by external pressure from online communities. But here's an important truth. You don't control your autonomic nervous system during sleep. Having a wet dream is a normal, healthy, physiological occurrence, especially when semen has been building up for days. So what can we take away from this? If your primary goal is to optimize either semen volume or sperm quality, the ideal window is typically between three to five days of abstinence, not 30. Longer than that, you're either reabsorbing key components or triggering a nocturnal release. And for couples trying to conceive, engaging in intercourse every other day around the window of ovulation is the gold standard for both volume and sperm vitality. In closing, semen retention is surrounded by a mixed bag of internet-driven myths and anecdotal stories that aren't always rooted in evidence. Will abstaining for 30 days give you superpowers, sharpen your brain, or skyrocket your manhood? The science says no. Could it give you a modest bump in semen volume for a few days? Sure. But your body's physiology has built-in limits, and exceeding those limits doesn't result in added benefit it can actually produce diminishing returns. So whether you're joining No Nut November to challenge yourself, explore discipline, or simply be part of a community, go ahead. But now you're doing it with accurate information about what's actually happening in your body. And remember, real empowerment comes not from misinformation, but from understanding the truth. If you found this helpful and you're ready to take your sexual health seriously, backed by facts, not fiction, join me weekly as we uncover what most health professionals won't talk about. Because at the end of the day, your well-being matters. You matter. Take care of yourself. You're worth it.